Hello and welcome to Inside Modular, the podcast of commercial modular construction brought to you by the Modular Building Institute. Welcome everyone. My name is John McMullen. I'm the marketing director here at MBI. Today I'm talking with Mike Wilmot, president and founder of Wilmot Modular and the current chair of the Modular Building Institute's board of directors. Mike is here to discuss the challenges and opportunities facing the modular construction industry today. Mike, thanks for being here. John, I look forward to our, our really good conversation on where the modular industry is going. Well, I've been looking forward to this for a while. Uh, so let's dive in. Uh, tell me about yourself and, and the formation of Wilmot Modular. What was your goal when you started out? John, uh, uh, I'm the co-founder of Wilmot Modular. We've been around for 32 years. Uh, our goal was to develop a really strong customer service company in the mid-Atlantic area. Uh, we're very proud of the fact that we grew from a small startup company to uh, a really uh, a strong company that has 3,500 accounts and 32 national awards from the MBI. So we're very proud of, of where we've gone and where we're going to go. And you and, and your wife, Kathy, have been in uh, the modular and relocatable buildings industry for, uh, like you said, 32 years. How have you seen things change over that time? I, I'm sure it must be uh, significant. All major changes. Uh, when we started, uh, what we used to call the wobbly box industry has turned into a very high powered, all kinds of modular construction being concrete and steel, uh, everything from whole campuses to retail centers, everything going modular. Uh, the evolution has been pretty dramatic with the new and, and, and really better ways of building accelerated construction. So you sound like a busy guy. I know this is a family business for you. You've got your fingers in everything. Why did you start uh, serving on MBI's board of directors? Uh, I was really passionate about the industry, and I could never give back to the industry what it's given to myself and my family. It really has been a great ride and a great journey through the modular business. Really enjoy working with the MBI. I enjoy helping steer some of the protection that we need to do, and we really look forward to, to building the industry, but I'm uh, really excited about being involved. And you are, as I mentioned, you're the board chair now. Um, what, what excites you in particular about being in that position? I love uh, working with a group of very talented board of directors. Uh, our, our, uh, our really uh, the exciting thing I see is growing market share for the industry and uh, really protecting the industry um, from different things that come to us as we get bigger and bigger. So you've got 32 years of experience under your belt. You're the the chair of a board of directors of the International Trade Association, largest in the world, you have a unique vantage point on the industry. I was wondering, from your point of view, uh, what are the, some of the biggest challenges facing the modular construction industry today? I would think our biggest challenge is the the acceptance of modular uh, from stick built. Uh, I also believe that the biggest challenge is that we need to continuously get the great work that the modular industry has done with, through public relations. I believe also that one of the big challenges is as we get bigger and bigger, we become target of the federal government. Uh, I do believe that Davis-Bacon is a big challenge for our industry. They want to move the Davis-Bacon Act into the factories, which we think is not the right way to move. So let's, let's dive into the Davis-Bacon Act uh, a little more. We've done... Uh... A lot of press on that. We've had a magazine, a podcast uh, uh, dedicated to the Davis-Bacon Act. I know you've been working very hard to spread the word about its potential impact. Uh, what can you tell me about uh, the act itself and, and what you've been hearing from MBI members that you've spoken with? Well, the Department of Labor has taken upon itself to apply uh, Davis-Bacon rates to our off-site factories. Uh, our owners of the factories and our stakeholders believe this is a big mistake. It would create total chaos within the industry to try to separate the standard rates of Davis-Bacon would create a lot of difficulty. Uh, it could potentially cause a $2 billion drop in revenue uh, if we can't solve it. Uh, I believe some factories will just say, no, we're not going to bid it because of the chaos that it would create. Um, mm -hmm. We we hopefully can uh, either... Uh, slow it down or um, amend it or get rid of it. Have you heard anything uh, specific from, I know you are uh, working with several members, part of a task force to raise awareness, raise uh, some revenue to uh, combat the, the DBA. Have you heard anything specific from members about 
how this will affect their workers in the factories? Very much so. I think they're concerned that um, the division of the labor costs would create a lot of problems, not only in reporting it, but implementing it. And um, I would think that what we want to do as an industry is to stay what we've done in the past very successfully. And I think uh, as long as we understand that this is not a move in the right direction, uh, I think the factories will be able to go back to the way we've done it and, and continue to do it right. So we've talked about a couple of challenges facing the industry, uh, not insignificant challenges at that, but let's let's switch gears for a second. What opportunities do you see for modular construction, uh, both now and in the next three to five years? Uh, I think uh, a gigantic opportunity for us as an industry is that we're only five to 10% of the total construction that's out there. I think we can double that in the next five years. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe there is a a great opportunity for the modular industry to be the leader in zero energy. Uh, I believe we, we've developed some studies that can show that modular construction can lead the way with zero energy buildings. There's also a, a huge need for migrant worker housing. Uh, I think as long as we can keep uh, our cost in line, we can be the leader in affordable housing. Uh, I also believe that with the disaster planning, we can be the, the solution to major disasters, whether it be hurricanes or tornadoes or anything in solving space problems for, for the world. Well, we've got two of those crises going on right now. Uh, simultaneously, we've got, you know, migrants being flown into states. Uh, New York, I know, has an immediate need for that. And we've got Ian coming up the coast of Florida. Uh, so a big need, I would think, for uh, relocatable buildings, is disaster relief, administrative infrastructure, you name it. I know the, the modular industry has a long history of responding to disasters like this. I, I can't imagine that'll change anytime soon. What's your take? I think there is a huge opportunity to, to help the communities out, whether it be through modular medical facilities or admin support. Uh, when Sandy hit years ago, our industry stepped up and did a wonderful job of supporting the, the workers, whether it was for the carpenters or the medical facility people. But we personally got involved in that. And it was a uh, a really good down deep feeling to see people getting helped by the modular industry. And uh, I think it's going to be a constant uh, when it, whether it be in Florida or in new Orleans, that uh, we've got people that can react in our industry and we can rapidly deploy uh, space to help people in these disasters. Which will only become more difficult if the DBA comes into effect, I would imagine. Oh, exactly. Uh, so talk to me about the modular building Institute, MBI. Uh, you're fortunate enough to be the board chair during a couple of notable milestones uh, this year and next. MBI just brought on its 500th member, uh, which we're very happy about. And then next year is the 40th anniversary uh, of the association itself. Uh, what's the importance of MBI and why should more companies consider joining? There's a just a tremendous need for us to be continuing to learn and grow as an industry. I think we are as a association, we create that vehicle for people to learn and to become stronger in the industry. Uh, I think our role from the MBI should be to educate and protect. And I think we do an exceptional job of that. Do you have any goals uh, still as board chair? I do. Um, I, there are several. Uh, I would like to create a very large war chest uh, to protect the industry, whether it be Davis-Bacon or any other uh, legislative issue that would attack our industry. I'd like to create a million dollar uh, war chest for us, and we're well on our way to do that. Uh, I'd also like the MBI to do grassroots uh, development with young architects and young people getting into the setup business. And I believe that we can train people uh, specifically for modular construction, but we definitely need to really attack the millennials and get them involved so that we got a future. Well, I think that's a, that's a great point. I know uh, worker shortage is coming up fast. It, it's, it's here now in, in many respects. Uh, training and education for younger workers is really critical, not just for us, but for the trades at large. But yeah, I can't wait to to work with you about you know education, any programs MBI can get to, to, to help spread the word and, and build some enthusiasm about uh, all the opportunities that Modular has to offer. No question. Tell me about your experiences at World of Modular, you know, MBI's big annual trade show. Well, how would you convince someone to attend who never has? I would tell our listeners that the 
the the world of modular is the conference for modular construction. Uh, you're going to be rubbing elbows with the experts throughout our industry. You're going to hear experts uh, really help you build your business and protect your business. Uh, we have world-renowned speakers coming in, whether it be economists or architects. Uh, it really is a great forum to learn more about the industry and to make some new contacts. It's a really great way to network with the, the major decision makers that are out there. And as you mentioned at the top, you can win some awards. That's right. Uh, what's, what's your favorite thing about the modular construction industry? You've been at 32 years now. Uh, you're don't show any sign, signs of slowing down. Uh, what, what, what's your favorite part? Oh, John, I just love, love the fact that we can create something from nothing. Uh, I love the fact of taking a clean slate and developing it from nothing into a beautiful building. It's extremely fulfilling to see our customers' eyes light up when they see a, a brand new building and it makes them look good. Uh, it's something that is very fulfilling. It's it's what I enjoy the most about what I do. After 36 years of doing this, uh, I get even more excited these days when I see uh, a new building going in and seeing our customers' happiness. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, thank you, Mike. It, it, it's always great to talk to you. I know this is a a challenging time for our industry. We have a lot going on, a lot of needs that we need to meet, um, but I know we're more than capable. I think you're doing a great job at the helm. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time. I can't wait to see you again at the World of Modular in Las Vegas. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. My name is John McMullen, and this has been another episode of Inside Modular, the podcast of commercial modular construction. Until next time.